you are welcome to yet another episode of HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. I believe many of us have seen the disturbing video that shows me two activists literary raid the Sony Square in New York City carrying boxes of what they called petitions from thousands of people they say wanted R. Kelly dropped by the giant record company. The government and their Sony counterparts want the world to believe that the Me Too found their way to Sony offices under their own guidance, and that Sony security was not aware this was going to happen. They want us to believe this demonstration was the work of the Me Too activists and that neither Sony nor the government was involved. However, taking a closer and more critical look at the video footage will reveal something different. The video shows a Sony security agent received the Me Too group like they were important guests opening doors for them, and as if that was not revealing enough, as they deliver their boxes full of signatures from the said petitioners, the security agent receives them with a smile on his face. This is not the kind of reaction anyone would expect from Sony officials who have been surprised by a group of demonstrators arriving at the square in such numbers, especially when they claim to be attempting to hold the corporation accountable for what they call enabling a predator like they called our own R. Kelly. They knew he was grooming young black girls as young as 13, 14, and 15 they and keeping it. them in his studio. They knew. They demand that RCA hear the voices of us and hear the voices of the over 200,000 Americans who want RCA to drop R. Kelly. But again for us who know the truth of the matter, we are not surprised that this is how events transpired that day. In fact, had they stayed longer into the lunch hour, there is a huge possibility that Sony would have ordered a catering company to prepare them a lunch meal. We have time and again reflected on Sony's involvement in the current ordeals R. Kelly is dealing with and looking at what happened that day. It's clear that the Sony officials had been informed prior to expect some rather important guests from the Me Too movement, and to give them special treatment for they were expecting them after all, and more than likely they were operating on Sony's payroll. This serves to show that indeed Sony operated in partnership with the government and the Me Too movement to bring R. Kelly to his knees. And they wouldn't in any way harass the very same people they hired. This is how Sony has been playing its games and destroying artists who are big enough to stand on their own once their contracts with them are about to expire. They know that when these artists go out alone, they will drive business away from Sony and this is against their sustainability plan and interest to remain the monopolies. Sony doesn't want to see any successful artists leave them. It happened with Michael Jackson, and the very same thing is now happening with R. Kelly. Interestingly though, Sony always applies the very same approach to destroying these artists, and it always begins with lawsuits and ends in untimely demise. This is why we got really concerned when R. Kelly started to develop blood clots and was denied access to proper medical care while at the MCC. We imagined this could be Sony's making and trying to get rid of the R&B King. If they were able to get the same Bureau of Prisons officers to leak his prison communications by phone and email, information which is supposed to be highly restricted to notorious public blogger Tasha Kay, and were able to get away with it even after an FBI investigation revealed this was true, what would stop us from thinking they could have paid off the same BOP to finish him off? Until now, the man behind the untimely death of Michael Jackson who goes by the name Dr. Murray has never spoken at all to tell the world who sent him. We have seen him state how much he loved Michael in a number of interviews, and how he never would have wished for him to die. He however leaves his statements open-ended as though to indicate there is more to this than he is willing to say by word of mouth, but if you are brilliant enough, you should be able to draw an accurate conclusion. Surely if we expect him to tell us Sony paid him and conditioned him to administer the lethal injection to the king of pop, in his own words, we are waiting forever. He wouldn't even dare mention this on his deathbed for fear of what can happen to his family members he will leave behind. Why is it that it wasn't until R. Kelly started demanding Sony for his millions that his legal problems started? We are aware R. Kelly walked into the banking hall for the first time ever and found that he had only 350,000 US dollars on his Bank of America account. He then demanded an explanation from Sony, only to wake up to the surviving R. Kelly docuseries a few months later. Why won't the government investigate Sony instead of investigating its victims? 
What is so special with this company of Japanese origin that it will tower right above every other American record label and take the lion's share of the business? Yet later make sure to destroy the artists it has worked with and exploited throughout their career. Why are they even here in the United States killing our people and stealing from them? According to Betty Richardson, people in the music industry know exactly what happened to R. Kelly but just won't speak on it. What we are sure of however is that it had nothing with being a pedophile. I am sure no one saw a child, we all saw grown women paraded against him just as was the case with Bill Cosby. Sadly, we seem to love the enemy so much that we don't care until it's them in trouble. It's a shame on Sony, a shame on industry, and in a way a shame on us that we are always ready to hand over our own to be terrorized and destroyed such that those that come after them do not have an inheritance. In case we haven't realized, America is afraid our successful citizens, and because they know the power of generational wealth which made the people that control the economy of this country and therefore that hold the power, they wouldn't let us become a part of that circle. They will do everything in their power to stop us. According to Judith Blakes, I have come to realize that when money is involved, Sony cares less. Michael Jackson once said it that Sony are very evil people. They don't care whose life they destroy as long as the money keeps coming in and piling up. But one thing I can say is there is a God and he is not dead. He is so in control and whatever happens in the dark will eventually come to light. According to Mindy Stein. It is so sad that Sony should be doing such things as they have done to Michael Jackson and R. Kelly. They should instead be kissing the grounds these guys walk on because they made them billions of dollars, but because they don't appreciate one bit here we are. In any case, I guess Sony planned it all out how to end successful artists' careers to protect their exploitative business enterprise. Shame on Sony and shame on those supporting such notorious company conduct. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.